Today, I'm going to show you how to make this by taking these guys right here and bringing them into here, traveling through here, but the easy way, and eventually bringing them to right here to eat these guys right here but the smaller version. Now, just to get you all a good world download, I did make a copy of this farm in an empty world. That way you can easily go up, go down, look through and see exactly how and where everything will be placed. Also, I did give you a material list here. Uh, the material list is going to include a bunch of glass, a bunch of sand, which you'll see a little bit later why you're going to need that. Um, and of course, you're going to need some hoppers, uh, chests for storage, 121 buckets of powder snow. It's going to be a little hard to get or a little hard to carry anyways. Um, you will need frogs, which I'll also show you how to get. And of course, you're going to be setting this up in a location that has a magma cube spawner in it. So without further ado, let's show you how to get all of these materials and get yourself set up for the farm. So I want to show you guys the easy way to do this in survival. And it's going to require a few steps because first of all, my first suggestion is to actually find this. This is not just any bastion in the nether, but this is the treasure room bastion. It is this specific bastion that you're going to want to find. Now you may find it on your own. It'll look like this. It'll kind of have the big tower here, the big cube here, and a little bridge goes over some lava. And if you break into the inside in any location, doesn't really matter. Um, it'll have all these different layers to it working its way down to these little lava pits. Now, if you don't know how to or want to find one easily in survival Minecraft, as long as you know your seed number, which you can find by going to settings and seeing right here, if you're on anything other than a realm, you should be able to easily find your seed. You're going to take that and you're going to go to this page right here, chunkbase.com. Click on apps, click on Bastion down here. Type in that seed number. I already have it loaded. If you're on, if you're playing on Bedrock, make sure you click on Bedrock Edition. And after you do that, it should load up all of the bastions. They should all be there. So if I start us out at zero zero, which is the dead center of the map, I can see all these different bastions. And if you hover over them, it'll tell you what type it is. You'll see down in the bottom right hand side there, it says Hogland Stables Treasure Room. So this brownish color one are the treasure rooms, and that will help you find the right bastion. From there, you can simply, if you want to double click it, it'll tell you the coordinates 608, 548. We will go back into game and you will travel to those coordinates, which is roughly where I am right now. So while getting here won't always be easy, getting into this thing and getting through this thing is also not going to be easy. I recommend that you take your time because you're going to see piglins and piglin brutes all over the place. And you're going to want to kill them because if you don't, they're going to kill you. My recommendation, get yourself a bow, plenty of arrows and fight them from a distance because these guys pack a punch and you're going to. Oh, OK, hopefully the floating lava doesn't kill you, but you're going to want to go through this whole tower right here. And then you're probably going to want to start from the top over here by going across the bridge and then fighting these guys as you go. It is usually easiest to get yourself somewhere out here in the middle, take a bow and start shooting them and then make sure that they can't get to you. Like, you know, make sure none of them run across right here, but you should be able to poke through and hit all of them from the edges because they will try to aggro you. Once you hit one, they will try to swarm. So as long as you are not easily accessible to them, you will be fine and go through layer by layer and make sure that they are all dead so you don't get snuck up on later. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do, and this is not going to be easy either, is you want to turn off this spawner because it will constantly be spawning magma cubes on you as you go. Now, my first suggestion is make yourself a little bit easier pathing so that way you don't get knocked into lava you probably want to bring some fire resistance potions if you have them or at a minimum make sure you have good fire resist gear on that way if you do fall into the lava you don't die also if you have enough iron i recommend you bring yourself a little bit of help because these guys will fight and try to kill the magma cubes so if you can bring you know three or four of these guys right here, they're going to help you out while you get this thing shut down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to build ourselves a bridge over. And then once you have yourself a semi safe space from the bottom, go ahead and place a glowstone here, 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 here and here. Now work your way up to the top like I've done here, being extremely careful to not break the spawner because once you break a spawner, it is broken forever. 
get rid of this chain right here and place a glowstone block right here. Get rid of all of this. Now, if I'm correct, that should block their spawns completely. Oh, oh, or, or not. Okay, plan B. What we're gonna do is we're gonna block all spawning locations by going four blocks out on each side and one block above and one block below. So to make things easy, if you were to say start at the bottom, you're gonna go out one, two, three, four. It can be any solid block is fine. I'm using iron because you guys can see it easier. Don't fall into lava like I just did. And then once you do that, you can then fill in all the corners like this. Kind of, you want to make it like a big, like diamond shape like this. And then we need to bring this up by two blocks. So it's the level of the spawner, one block above, one block below. This is every spot that these guys can actually spawn in. So if we fill them all with blocks, then we will not have to worry about these guys actually spawning anymore. And once you've done that, these guys, they can no longer spawn. So now if you want to take your time to get all this gold out or wow. even get some cool loot like netherite ingots and diamond gear and stuff, you can get all of that here and then clear it all out of the way because you don't need it here anymore. Okay, so now that we have our area here secure and ready to go, we need to get our frogs. Now we want to make sure we give ourselves easy access to this place because that's going to be really important to get our frogs here. So I think my method is I'm just going to, I'm going to punch a hole and this wall right here, actually kind of a thick wall. And uh, we're actually just going to start staircasing ourselves upwards because what I want to do is I want to get. I don't like that sound. I want to get to the nether ceiling because if I can get to the nether ceiling, traveling in and out of here is actually going to become incredibly easy. And eventually after like me, I, I fought with some lava down there. Um, we're going to make our way up to the nether roof and we really just want to get as high as we possibly can. This part's going to be a little tedious. It's going to be a little annoying, but when you have to move something as fragile as frogs in here that are likely going to hit lava and die or get blasted by gas or something like that, doing something like this is actually going to make things a lot easier um, in terms of traveling up and down. And you're going to get yourself up to about right here. About level 120 will be good. And just clear yourself out a little area. You don't need a lot of space, but you'll want to clear yourself out a, a small area here. And now we need to go get our frogs. So now you have three different color frog lights. There's three different types of frogs. The three different types of color frogs will each give a different light. So if you want all of them, you're going to need to get one of every type of frog. If you only want one of the types of lights, then you only need to get one type of frog. But just so you know, this purple color called uh, pearlescent, this is the warm frog found here in the swamp or a frog that is born in a warm environment. Then you have the green for the cold variant. If you have a frog that is born in a colder environment, somewhere with snow, for example, or up in the mountain biomes, a snowy mountain biome, they will uh, be a different color than this frog. I'll show you in a little bit and they will make this one. And then you have the yellow, which is for the like regular environments. If you have one that's born in like the plains or something like that. Now I'm going to get each one of these frogs because transporting them is going to be really uh, important. And I want to show you the easy way to get them. And bam, there we go. We got three different frogs here and now we need to get to our spot in another. We're going to make another portal again. And then now what we're going to do is taking note of where our coordinates were in the nether before where we dug our way up. We went up to 592, 543. It's where I'm looking at on my other screen right there. Um, so we want to make sure we move in that right direction and get up to that same area too. Um, but we want to get our way up here, I guess, first. And we're going to get our way all the way up to that level 120 that we were at before. And it'll make things, again, easy for us to travel and a lot less likely that we're going to die. And more importantly, that those frogs are going to die because those guys, they're not that easy to get, are they? And once we get up to that 120 here, now we just have to go in a straight line and get ourselves all the way over to 593. And finally, once we have our frogs over here that are really getting in the way, um, I should be able to yes we can uh we could go through we could run some rails down here nothing too crazy just a set of regular rails straight down that way once we get to this point the frogs don't fall and die and once you get these guys in here just make sure they go to a safe area now we could place our cart here let's see if we can get a frog in the mine cart there we go push him down next frog in the mine cart push him down 
And one last frog. Oh. Okay. Oh. Can you not do that? One last frog in the minecart and push him down. And you might even catch a piglin brute and an enderman. Another thing you're going to need, this one's going to be a little bit harder because you're probably going to need shulker boxes to effectively do this. We're going to need approximately 121 buckets of powdered snow. Now, I would play it safe and maybe get, I don't know, 150 or something like that. But all you got to do is come out to a mountain biome or a snow biome of some sort. And you can see the difference slightly between powdered snow, which looks a little bit more flaky, and this, which looks a little bit more streaky. And just come out here with a bucket and then just start picking up powdered snow. Once you find it, it's not hard to get. And if you have a shulker box, it should not be that bad to pick up in mass. But the reason why you're going to need all that extra space is because it does not stack. So have a shulker box boxes is going to be very useful but get yourself at least 121 buckets full of powder snow okay now this next part we're gonna make incredibly easy what i'm gonna do is probably just right here i think it depends on how fast and efficient you want this farm to be the best thing to do is to go from this spot right here remember our spawner is one block above that we want to go about eight blocks down from here if you do that, you are going to have to clear out some lava. And I think that's what we're going to want to do here because I would like to have that extra space. This part's going to be potentially a, a kind of big pain in the butt because this lava, it might go down decent ways. I don't really know. Um, what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to clear out all of the lava inside of this area. And just to make sure that none of our, um, our magma cube guys like a glitch outside of this area we're probably going to want to go one block outside of that too so if i were to trace that out that would mean that not right here right so this would be all of the space that we want to have for floor space and then also too these magma cube guys whenever they get killed by our killing mechanism which is going to be powdered snow if you have these corners here, they're probably going to glitch through them. It's going to happen quite often. So my next recommendation, instead of doing a diamond shape, you're going to want to do a square shape. It's going to require that you're going to have to clear a little bit more space. We're going to also end up having to use a bit more in terms of hoppers. But the little bit extra work that you're going to have to do is going to be worth it to not have magma cubes bounce out of here and slow your farm down significantly if they do bounce out. So when we do this, we're going to take this and we're going to bring it all the way up to maybe about two, two spots above this, this top level we already have designated. So this is the top level. So we're going to go one, two, and then that should be more than enough. Now, my recommendation for clearing out however many blocks down here, we're going to end up needing to clear out to go down eight blocks from the center there. I'm going to recommend sand because sand will just kind of fall down on its own and we can just do it one line at a time. It doesn't have to be anything super crazy, right? So what we could do is we could just kind of break these going all the way down like this and then just place sand until we fill in all of the lava. And then we're just going to repeat this process all the way down. So we will go down our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that spot right there, probably going to have more areas we need to fill up with sand. That's fine. That's okay. Again, we're going to make this thing really, really like optimized and quick, right? There we go, eight. So we want our floor to be right here. And our floor is actually gonna end up being made of hoppers. So I'm just gonna put a hopper right there for now. That'll signify that that is our floor. And then we can take all of this sand out. You'll get it all back. You'll use it to fill in a few more spots, a few more locations as we go. And I recommend just work your way down like one layer at a time. It's gonna make it easier and less likely that you're gonna fall in lava and die slash get hurt by it. Like this stuff right here. Okay, now I have this area cleared all the way down to where I want it to be cleared to. And I have also cleared out a little area where I want my chests to go. So now what we need to do is we need to make this entire floor out of hoppers. We're gonna run them all this way. And then we can run all hoppers in all the way across here, just like this, and just make a big old floor hoppers.
And then next, right out here, is where you're going to want to have your storage chest. Now, you can go as deep in as you want to. I wanted to give myself a little bit of space here to make like a stairway coming down, uh, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to put in a double chest. Three, four, and five. And then we can have hoppers coming in like this. And five. Go ahead and make yourself like a ladder going up or something would probably make life a lot easier. We can go ahead and fill this area back up because we've got to keep our frogs in, right? And speaking of frogs, we can actually go ahead and we can bring them in right now. So just go through, break, break, break. So I'd probably just like break this, right? Pillar my way in here. I get them to, to generally follow and take the leads off. Next thing we need is powdered snow. You need powdered snow for every spot here would be good. You could maybe, if you wanted to save one, I would maybe go in rows like this would make it kind of easy to place. And I have not actually tested this out yet. So we're gonna, we're gonna watch it and see how it goes. Mm, actually, you know what? This may cause issues with the frogs. So we're just gonna fill the whole thing in. The more I think about it, the more problem I think it's gonna be. And you only want one layer. You do not need multiple. So one layer just like this would be okay now we need to go through we need to fill in the rest of our i'm using glass you can use whatever solid block you want to it's going to be fine only reason i'm using glass right here is so we can easily walk around and see it and make sure everything's working good and looks fine and usually when i make these sorts of things i like to see them anyways just so i know that they're working 100 percent as i intend them to and then now here comes what's probably gonna be the hardest part for you it's just knocking these out. I would probably recommend to be safe, like give yourself a little stool or something right here. Poke your head in, reach, as, reach in as far as you can, because they're going to start spawning almost right away. Do not break that spawner. Get all of the blocks that you can get from here. And then you should be able to just go to the other side and get the rest. And then last but not least, get yourself back out here to the top. If you need to go ahead and pillar across. You don't want any of them to get on top of the spawner either. So go ahead and put one, two, three blocks right there and that will block them in you can leave the top open if you want to they're not going to bounce their way out or get their way out and then you're going to see that these guys they're freezing in there and actually dying i don't even know if i can go in and see myself really but they're turning into the smaller ones down there and then the frogs when they become the smallest version the frogs eat them while reviewing the footage, I decided I wanted to give you guys a better look. So I went ahead and I made a version of this farm just out in a super flat creative test world. That way you can see everything. And now you can see what happens. The big slimes, the big magma cubes, they spawn. And then here shortly, they're taking damage. They're freezing in here. And then what they're going to do is they're going to turn to the medium sized ones. Which then also are going to freeze in the snow up there as well. Now you'll see they break down to the smallest ones and the frogs do their thing. They start eating magma cubes and pooping out frog lights. It's actually all happening so fast you don't even see the frog lights coming out because they are actually being picked up instantly by the hoppers. As you can tell when I go to take a look in here, we will get some magma cubes out of this system, but for the most part, we are getting all sorts of different color frog lights. Now, if you would like to download this world that you see right here, check the description down below. I will have a link for you to download it. Thought it'd be a little bit easier for you guys to see this world than it would be the one that it's actually like I made in a server because this shows you the exact way to build it without any of the extra stuff around. Also, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give a thumbs up to the video by clicking the thumbs up button down below subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already drop me a comment it helps out a lot with the youtube algorithm i don't care if you're just saying hello you're leaving your favorite emoji or if you want to go ahead and leave something fun and constructive some bit of information whatever the case may be drop that comment down below if you'd like to support the channel monetarily, you can leave a super thanks in this video and that will leave a donation with a comment. You can join me on live stream and leave a super chat there or you can become a member by clicking the join button down below and that membership will get you all sorts of different perks. Thank you so much for watching the video today. I do appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Bye.